Hi guys, welcome to Wicked Movie Channel. This year turned out to be really difficult, including for filmmaking. A huge number of premieres of the most interesting movies were postponed indefinitely. However, we have collected some of the best movies of 2020 and now you're watching the first part. Soon a second selection will be posted on the channel. Don't forget to subscribe and you won't miss it. So, let's begin. Greyhound the movie is based on the novel The Good Shepherd by British writer Cecil Scott Forrester, and the script of the film was written by Tom Hanks himself. The actions is set in February 1942 in the North Atlantic. Captain Ernest Krauss takes command of the US Navy destroyer Greyhound on the first voyage where he accompanies merchant ships. German submarines are trying to attack the convoy. The team has to confront the superior forces of the enemy. The script gets the most out of the situation. Actually, the entire film is dedicated to the aforementioned operation, a test and hellish journey. The atmosphere is almost completely immerses the audience in the world of war. Still, the emotional component of Greyhound is indeed the appeal of this film, rests primarily on the lead actor. Tom Hanks literally in any way is able to show interesting details that turns any character into a living person. This movie is no exception. Greyhound is not a brightest film in terms of action. There are even too many blockbusters about World Second War. However, such simple plot, where the main villain is the war itself, are useful and necessary. They don't cause controversy over which country has invested more in the victory, but simply show that it was hard and scary for everyone. 10th place, Greyhound. Hillbillyology. Netflix already invites first-class directors on a regular basis and produces not only entertainment, but also serious movies. This time in the director's chair was Ron Howard, who shot such films as Beautiful Mind, Cinderella Man, Thrush and others. The script is based on the memories of the certain J.D. Vance about the two most important periods of his life, Ed Onesses and his time at university. The real timeline concerns specifically Vance's law school education where he lives a life far removed from his ancestors' lifestyle. He has a girlfriend and the opportunity to get a prestigious job. But family problems pull him home. His mother, Beth, suffers from drug addiction. This is an emotional, difficult family drama, in which the plot, characters and setting are filled with excessive emotional intensity of passions. Literally, from the first to the last minute of the film, everyone constantly swears, argues and sort out their relationship, thereby trying to prove their truth of life, so they can be understood, noticed or at least just heard. Ninth place, Hillbillyology. Palm Springs Niles spends his yesterday, today and tomorrow at his girlfriend's deluxe summer wedding. Every day he swims in the pool, sunbathes, drinking beer in cans, and in the evening comes off at the wedding ceremony. In this way, Niles spends his days, months and possibly years already strapped in an endless time loop. And all due to the fact and after a small earthquake, a time portal opened and nearby cave and once falling into it. Niles is forced to leave the same day, restarting it either with the help of his own death or by falling asleep. At first sign, this is another variation of Groundhog Day, published 25 years ago. However, this movie brings new ideas to the genre. Niles is a Murray's hero, who by the end of the film remoted and understood the real value of life. Firstly, he resigned himself to his fate and secondly, he learned to enjoy the fact that tomorrow will never come. Niles is also not the only person stuck in the loop, and the movie from the time to time debates in the direction of drama then in the direction of the sci-fi genre. But at the same time, the tape doesn't forget for a second that the viewer is watching a light comedy with an eye to carefree viewing in the company of friends. 8th place, Palm Springs. The Banker Based on the true events, the film tells the story of Bernard Garrett and Joe Morris, black entrepreneurs who became the king of the real estate in Los Angeles in the 1950s. The two leaders not only got rich, but were able to organize the settlement of black people in the respectable white areas of Los Angeles, which led to the end of segregation in the city. Knowing that the real estate business is inseparable from banking, they hire a chairman named Matt Stenier, 
a white simpleton they taught to act like a hardened banker to be the face of the company because black will not be taken seriously as businessmen. It's usually extremely boring to watch film about realtors and banking, especially if they are trying to calculate the capitalization rate. However, this tape bases on tedious moments, turning them into part of scam. Sometimes the pace of the film changes, becoming perky, and almost transformed into a comedy thanks to the characters of Nicholas Holt. But the movie doesn't stay in such mood for too long, returning into seriousness in time and occurring moderate tension in the plot. Fascinating, sometimes funny movie. Seventh place, The Banker. The Devil All the Time The story begins in the 50s in the United States and tell about several people with different morals, located in the same country. It will be about a war veteran and his son, about a couple of maniacs who killed the lonely fellow travelers, about a corrupt policeman and about prayers who have crossed all the facets of the morality of their faith. Non-linear narration and constant switching between the different characters allowed to reveal this history in as much detail as possible. On behalf of all these participants, even negative characters here get their own distinctly sounding voice. The main asset to the film is, of course, a gorgeous cost. The last time so many movie stars could boast of last year's detective knives out. Jason Clark, Bill Spigart, Robert Pattinson also shine here. But we would like to separately mention Tom Holland. Definitely, now this is the best role in his career. This is the straightforward young man who is accustomed to live according to the truth and to do as it should. On the whole, this is a dark, harsh, viscous drama, with elements of thriller which will almost certainly leave behind a bitter aftertaste and slight anxiety. Sixth place. The Devil All the Time. The King of Staten Island. The movie tells about a representative of the millennial generation in the worst sense of this words, 24-year-old Scott who is absolutely in no hurry to grow up. The guy lives like a plant, drinks and getting high, completely not caring about the future. His widow mom is certainly not happy. Scott's dream job is to create the first statue cafe, but he has no ambition to even get his butt off the couch. In short, the guy was thrown off balance only by the fact that his mom finds new love in the person of firefighter Ray. Scott immediately didn't like it, and the guy devotes all his free time to discrediting his mother's boyfriend, although he really humiliates only himself. The film is written and directed by Judd Apatow, a man who has contributed in one way or another to myriad of comedies such as Superbad, The 40-Year-Old Virgin, Knocked Up or Pineapple Express. Films were very successful in their time. This time, Epato added more drama to the comedy and confirmed that he is still able to surprise and even make the viewer cry, who, as a rule, doesn't accept or receive such a spectrum of emotions from watching the next American comedy about the dope guy. An excellent film that really made me happy this year. Fifth place, The King of Staten Island. Mink. In 1940, a prominent Hollywood screenwriter, Herman Mankiewicz, by coincidence, finds himself imprisoned in a remote California ranch with a broken and several places leg. A British stenographer, a German nurse, prohibition and obligation to write a script for a new film in two months. Monk received an order for the script from 20-year-old New York genius Orson Welles. The young director is about to conquer Los Angeles with the movie called Citizen Kane a very personal movie for David Pincher, scripted by his father Jack. Pincher meticulously recreated on the screen a movie of the era of those years. The format of the video, the details of the frames, the sound recorded not in stereo, but in mono, and much more. Structurally, Monk is completely similar to Kane, dividing the action into a main and flashbacks. It mainly talks about the process of writing the famous script and about the writer himself in flashbacks. In the film, the role of Gary Oldman and Amanda Seyfried were gorgeous, as well as the technical components at the highest level. The movie is beautiful from all sides and it looks like it will be soon by one of the main contenders for Academy Awards. Fourth place, Mank. Tenet. 
After the terrorist attack at the Kiev Opera House, a CIA agent teams up with the British intelligence to confront a Russia oligarch who made his fortune in the arms trade. To do this, agent used time inversion, forcing events that have already occurred to go backwards. Each new movie by Christopher Nolan is an event in world cinema, and Tenet was no exception. This is a high-quality sci-fi action movie in some places strongly tending to spy films. It impresses with an atmospheric soundtrack and a fresh concept, although it slightly disappoints with the rather superficial characters and an overly district plot for perception. This is not Christopher Nolan's best film, and certainly not the best movie of the year, and we personally think that this is probably the only one movie for which worth to leave the house and go to the cinema. Third place, Tenet. Another round. The movie tells about the history teacher Martin, who looks like an incredibly tired man, as if he has lost all will to life. He is cold in his relation with his family, passive and simply dull in presenting something to students. But the character's life changes dramatically when at the birthday party of one of his friends, psychology teacher, talks about a funny theory. They say that a person is born with a lack of alcohol in the body, equal to 0.5 ppm. The theory belongs to a Norwegian psychologist, who somewhere mentioned this conclusion. As a result, the group of teachers decides to add a little variety to their life, to conduct an experiment to test how their social life will change. The movie combines several genres, the comedic and positive tone changes over time to drama, a soulful and slightly sad movie about relationships, friends, family and midlife crisis. Excellent acting and cute humor help the viewer to not get tired during almost two hours of timekeeping. Second place. Another round. The Trail of the Chicago 7 The story based on the true events and tells about the trial in the 1968 case considering the protest activist of the Democratic National Assembly. The reason for that was eight-day August riots in Chicago. As a result, leaders of protests were charged with conspiracy in crossing state lines to incite riot. The movie has many strengths, a bright cost coupled with fast editing, interspersed documentary archival footage, exemplary script and strong direction made the film a truly breathtaking sight. This is by no means a boring legal drama or an abstruse film about the behind the scenes of the political struggle. The movie has a bouncy narrative with a lot of irony and humor, biting phrases mixed with flashbacks from the collisions of the August night of 1968. The film describes the events that took place 50 years ago. It's extremely relevant for today's days. First place. The Trio of the Chicago 7. Well, this is it. Thanks for watching. Share your movie impressions in the comments below. And don't forget to subscribe and put the big thumbs up. See you. Bye.